In this video, we're featuring 411 Dragway, a historic drag strip in East Tennessee. It opened in 1969 and closed in 2014 and leaves behind a legacy that'll never be forgotten by the local racing community. My buddy Kyle at Shadden Motorsports YouTube channel, he put together a video about the history of the oval track and what, kind of what it means to him. So my video is gonna focus primarily on the drag strip, but the oval track was a really important part of this whole place and it actually came before the drag strip. So let's start there with 1963 opening day at the Motor Speedway, which was a 3 8 mile dirt oval. So the location of this track was just outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, and East Tennessee already had a lot of racing going on. There was a lot of dirt track racing. There was even a lot of drag racing in this area in the 1960s. So this track came along and it got its name from the fact that it was right next to Highway 411. So 411 Speedway started in 1963, and it was owned by Coy Floyd, and he ran this track for about five years before he decided to build the drag strip. And this area already had several drag strips. There was Maryville Dragway, which was actually south of Maryville. His property was north of Maryville, so there was enough distance there to make sense of it. There was another drag strip in Loudoun, Tennessee, another one in Harriman, Tennessee, of course, Bristol, there was a lot of drag strips in the area, but Coy Floyd saw the need for one in his area. So he built this track. It was originally a quarter mile drag strip. And you can see in this newspaper article from January of 1968, there was a big article about it. You can see he's spending $100,000 to build this new facility, which was a huge amount of money back then. And you can see even in this picture, they're clearing the land and getting it ready. But you can also see that it says, they should be racing by April 1st, which was pretty optimistic. 411 Dragway opened to the public for the first time on Friday, May 23rd, 1969. And this was a very well attended event. Lots of people have been waiting for this track to open up. And there was a lot of great cars on hand. One particular car was a nitro burning, small block Chevy powered front engine dragster raced by Floyd Whitey James from Maryville. And he was making a test pass, not up against any other cars and ended up crashing this dragster at over 165 miles per hour. And unfortunately, it took Floyd's life and it really spoiled the fun of this grand opening event. And this could have been disastrous for 411 Dragway because not only did it spoil the fun of that grand opening night, it also ended up in a legal battle with Floyd's wife, Margaret, who sued the track for $275,000. And this stayed tied up in legal battles until it was resolved in 1972. Less than a month after that opening night, residents of a nearby subdivision had filed charges against the track for operating a dangerous and commercial facility which has caused the value of their property to drop. So already, we're talking one month in to this drag strip being in existence, there's issues with the neighbors complaining and you know that could have absolutely ended this drag strip, even though the Speedway had been in operation for over five years at this point. So in June of 1969, Jim Stennett took over drag racing operations. Now this was probably a legal maneuver to try to get Coy Floyd's name out of the newspapers and out of all these legal issues. So Jim Stennett came in and started running the drag strip and had a pretty successful program. And then in April of 1970, Claude Raby ended up buying the entire facility and there were a lot of changes that happened in 1970, including a name change. Instead of 411 Speedway and 411 Dragway, the tracks would now be known as Knoxville Raceway and Knoxville Dragway for a very short period of time. The next big change came in 1971 when the track switched from AHRA rules to IHRA rules, and they actually started dial-in racing in 1971. Pretty revolutionary to start the dial-in system that early on with this local track. Of course, that kind of morphed into what we now know as bracket racing, but early on it was based around the stock appearing cars, the stock eliminator type of car that would have run in that time period, muscle cars and things like that. Now here's an interesting newspaper clipping from July of 1971 in the local Knoxville newspaper. And it says that 411 Dragway has closed permanently. And then only a few days later, another article came out in the paper that said that the injunction had been lifted and that the track would resume operation as normal. And then in 1972, the name changed again. This time it's called 411 International Raceway. Still the same track, still the same basic setup, but just a new name. 
And you can see in these advertisements that Thompson's Auto Care Center put together back in 1972, they had a lot of things to talk about there. Through the years, there was all sorts of special attractions at the drag strip, including jet cars, wheel standers, special match races, and one particular match race came in 1973, and that's when Big Willie Robinson brought his two Dodge Daytonas. Now, these cars had a special mystique because they were basically like the outlaws of drag racing back in the day. These were street racers that would travel around to different tracks and do these side-by-side -side match races and, you know, take on local contenders. And it was just a really neat experience that was outside of the norm for regular class racing and stuff like that. So Big Willie Robinson came with his two Daytonas and his wife, Tomiko, was driving the second car and actually went off the end of the track and crashed it badly. And she was injured and taken to a local hospital. Another memorable crash was when Jim Needham rolled his 55 Chevrolet called Just a Boogie in, in the 80s. This was a legendary car that ran at 411 for many years and ended up crashing it down on the big end, got upside down, it was a big deal for the local racing community to see a car like this get destroyed. But Jim came back and kept on drag racing. He was uninjured in the crash. Another management change happened in 1974, and that's when Sam Renfro was named the general manager of the Speedway and Dragway. In 1976, the track would change hands again, this time going to three individuals, Fred Talent, Danny Sluter, and Dan Burnett, and Danny Sluter ended up running the drag strip for many years. And this article states that the round track and motocross track had not been in operation for the last two seasons. So that's a little bit of a gap in the history there where the two tracks were out of commission while the drag strip continued to operate. All of these ownership changes and management changes could spell disaster for a drag strip or any type of racetrack. And luckily it continued to power through all of those changes and all of those issues that came up, all the lawsuits, and continued to be a popular place to race. Meanwhile, other local tracks like Harriman Drag Strip and Maryville Dragway, Loudon Dragway, all of those tracks were fizzling out. They were either being shut down because of insurance issues, not enough profit, you know, they're having to upgrade their facilities, and it was just a matter of time before those really old tracks phased out. And this newer track, 411, continue to operate and continue to be popular well into the 70s and 80s. In 1980 Danny Sluter was still running the track and he made the decision to shorten it from a quarter mile to an eighth mile and this was already pretty normal around this area Crossville drag strip had been built a couple of years before that and it was a purpose-built eighth mile track Brainerd Optimus drag strip had already been changed from a quarter mile to 
eighth mile. So it was pretty normal. A lot of the cars were already set up for eighth mile racing. Through the 80s and 90s, this track continued to grow in popularity and there was all sorts of different types of racing coming into play at that point. It wasn't just bracket cars anymore. The door slammers were really popular, pro mods. And then of course, in the 1990s, the popularity of street car racing became a thing and it had its own program there for street cars or street legal cars at that time. And that continued to grow into the outlaw street car movement. And you know, this track just continued to kind of follow some of those trends and continue to be popular in this area. My first experience at 411 Dragway was an event called Rat Rod Rumble. And that happened in 2006. And I loved the event. It was a lot of old school hot rods and gassers. And it was just a really neat event at this old school track. So it was a good fit. I ended up going for a few years after that and even took my old Corvette down the drag strip once. So that was a really neat experience. And then I continued to go to 411 for other events like Scott Abbott's Drag Bash event and a few others throughout the years. So it was a really neat place. And ultimately, more ownership changes continued to happen and the road got a little bit bumpier around 2012. And I actually visited the track in 2012 and took the, some of these pictures that you're seeing here because the track was said to be closed for good. Well, during some of those ownership changes, several people reached out to the owners of the facility and they ended up getting a lease agreement on the drag strip and they ran for another couple of seasons. And ultimately it was 2014 when the track closed for good. The surface was still there and there was still hope from the local drag racing community that somebody would come in and bring this thing back to life because it was a, a local treasure. It was a place that so many memories were captured and so many good times were had that a lot of these local drag racers wanted to bring it back. And now, years later, the whole track has been sold to Copart and will be demolished and will ultimately end up being a junkyard. So, you know, it's an unfortunate ending to this legendary track here in East Tennessee, but it's what's happening all across the country right now. These property values are exceeding what the track owners can make in regular business operations, and they can't say no to some of these offers. So another track is gone, but I wanted to bring you the history of this place and let you know why every track has its story and every track has its own significance in its local area. And 411 Dragway is just another one of those examples. I wanna say a huge thank you to Jeff Patty for some of these video clips. Lots of great action from the early 1980s in these clips. And then of course, lots of great pictures from personal albums through the years that I've been able to take off of Facebook or off of the internet and put into here just to kind of give you an idea of what this track was like, what the atmosphere was like, and why so many people loved it. I hate to see a place like this completely be leveled and forgotten over time, but I'm hoping this video will help remind everybody why this place was so special and provide just a little bit of historical element to this old school track that ran from 1969 to 2014.